Okay, this is the PEDS ATI review. Um, instruct the parent to keep the preschooler indoors during lawn maintenance or when the pollen count is increased for asthma. Hydrotherapy for debridement of a wound is an extremely painful procedure that requires analgesia and or sedation. The transmission of infectious diseases is the greatest risk to this child and other children on the unit. Therefore, the child's disease process is the nurse's priority consideration. Expressing likes and dislikes is an expected behavior of toddlers. The metabolic rate of a child who has heart failure is high because of poor cardiac function. Therefore, the nurse should provide small frequent meals for a child because it helps to conserve energy. Mononucleosis is a mildly contagious illness that occurs sporadically or in groups and is primarily caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. Nystatin, shake the medication prior to administration to disperse the medication evenly within the suspension. A child who is severely immunocompromised and is unable to adequately respond to infectious organisms resulting in the potential for overwhelming infection. Therefore, the nurse should screen the child's visitors for indications of infection. To discontinue IV fluids and catheter, turn off the IV pump, occlude the IV tubing, and then remove the tape securing the catheter. Apply pressure over the catheter insertion site. Diaper dermatitis. Provide a protective barrier such as zinc oxide against the irritants allows the skin to heal. The Joxin. Brush the child's teeth after administering Dijoxin to prevent tooth decay caused by the medication, which comes as a sweetened liquid to enhance the taste. Urgent versus non-urgent. The priority finding is a report of decreased vision in the left eye. Instruct the guardians that a preschool age, that at the preschool age, play should focus on social, mental, and physical development such as dress up. Epiglottitis, monitor the child's oxygen saturation level because the child is experiencing acute respiratory distress. Pneumothorax, apply supplemental oxygen, prepare for chest tube insertion. Adolescent with iron deficiency anemia. Encourage the adolescent to eat raisins because they contain the highest amount of non-heme iron. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Teach the family the importance of encouraging the child to perform independent self-care. Lumbar puncture. Apply a, a topical analgesic to the lumbar site one hour prior to the procedure to decrease the adolescent's pain while the lumbar needle is inserted. Pale pink mucous membranes living in an older urban house that is being renovated and the parents report that the toddler seems less active and gets tired more quickly are findings that require follow-up. These findings are associated with lead poisoning and the child's blood level should be determined. The nurse should identify that the child is a risk for developing intellectual deficits, such as a decreased IQ, due to the increase in membrane permeability of the brain tissue resulting in increased intracranial pressure, tissue ischemia, and atrophy. Sakimer is a chelating agent that is used in children who have blood lead levels of greater than 45 micrograms and are asymptomatic. Open the Sakiner capsule and sprinkle it on one, tables, one teaspoon of applesauce. A two-year-old child is unable to swallow a capsule, and this capsule is not an extended or time-release capsule. Therefore, opening the capsule and sprinkling the contents on a small amount of pleasurable food will assist in the administration of the medication. A low hematocrit level indicates anemia. A child who has anemia can exhibit fatigue, lightheadedness, tachycardia, dyspnea, and pallor due to the decreased oxygen carrying capacity of the blood cells. Allergy to neomycin with an anaphylactic reaction is a contraindication for receiving an MMR vaccine. Clients who have a severe allergy to eggs or gelatin should not receive this vaccine. 
After establishing an airway and stabilizing the child's respirations, the next action the nurse should take while using the airway, breathing, and circulation approach to client care is to establish IV access to maintain the child's circulatory volume. Creatinine is a byproduct of protein metabolism and is, the hell? and is excreted from the body through the kidneys. An elevated serine creatinine level can indicate an alteration in kidney function. Therefore, the nurse should identify this finding as an indication of organ rejection. The nurse should secure the toddler using the safety harness when they are sitting in a high chair. This decreases the risk of a fall and prevent injuries. McBurney's point. This area of the right lower quadrant located about two thirds of the way between the umbilicus and the client's anterior superior iliac spine is the area where a client who has appendicitis is most likely to report pain and tenderness. Strabismus or crossing of the eyes typically disappears at three to four months of age. If not corrected early, this can lead to blindness. Therefore, the nurse should report this finding to the provider. Children who have neutropenia are immunocompromised and susceptible to infection. Therefore, places where large groups of people gather, such as daycare centers, should be avoided. Solium, sodium polycysterine sulfonate enema. Monitor the adolescent's blood potassium level following the administration of sodium polycysterine sulfonate. This medication is used to treat hyperkalemia by exchanging sodium ions for potassium ions in the intestine. Initiate droplet precautions for a child who has pertussis, also known as whooping cough. Pertussis is transmitted through contact with infected large droplet nuclei that are suspended in the air when the child coughs, sneezes, or talks. 18-month-old with dehydration. Teach the parent to closely monitor the child's number of wet diapers. Monitoring the number of wet diapers per day is an effective way for the parent to monitor adequate output and hydration status. A child who has had a head in injury can develop diabetes insipidus because of pituitary hypofunction, leading to a deficiency of antidiuretic hormone. Under discretion of antidiuretic hormone leads to polyuria and polydipsia and dehydration. Buck's traction is a type of skin traction that can be used to immobilize extremities prior to surgery. The nurse should provide frequent neurovascular checks at least every four hours after the first 24 hours of placement of Buck's traction. Symmetric burns to the lower extremities can indicate physical abuse. The patterns are usually characteristic of the method or object used, such as cigar or cigarette burns, or burns in the shape of an iron. Wow. To decrease the risk for injury, parents should ensure that the bike is the correct size for the child. When seated on the bike, the child should be able to stand with the ball of each foot touching the ground and should be able to stand with each foot flat on the ground when straddling the bike's center bar. An expected developmental milestone of a four-year-old child is using scissors to cut out a shape. The nurse should expect hypoactive bowel sounds following appendiceal rupture or if the child has developed peritonitis. Additionally, hypoactive bowel sounds are the are an unexpected finding immediately following abdominal surgery until full peristalsis resumes. An emaciated minor can sign the consent form for treatment of an STI or any other form of medical treatment requiring consent. Digoxin. The nurse should determine that the priority finding is three episodes of vomiting. This can indicate digoxin toxicity, which requires immediate intervention. Therefore, this is the nurse's priority finding. Heel stick, allow the mother to breastfeed the infant prior to or during the procedure. Evidence-based evidence practice indicates breastfeeding or non-nutritive sucking with the pacifier can provide non-pharmacological pain management in infants. Wilms tumor, avoid palpating the abdomen when bathing the child before surgery because movement of the tumor can cause cancer cells 
to disseminate to other sites adjacent and distant to the tumor site. An infant who has an epidural hematoma is at risk for seizure activity. Implement seizure precautions for the child. Organ donation. The first action the nurse should take when using the nursing process is assessment. The nurse should first explore the patient's feelings and wishes regarding organ donation to assist in determining if organ donation is the right choice of the family. Dry, hacking cough is a manifestation of pertussis. This disease usually begins when, with indications of an upper respiratory tract infection, which includes a dry, hacking cough that is sometimes more severe at night. A preschooler does not have an accurate understanding of time. They use language, but most of the time they do not actually know or conceive the meaning of the words. An increased erythrocyte sedimentation rate is an indication of osteomyelitis, a potential complication following a surgical repair or fracture. A toddler's poor personal hygiene can be a potential indication of physical neglect. Because toddlers are still dependent on their parents or guardians for help with hygiene needs, poor personal hygiene can indicate a lack of supervision. A child who has a head injury can develop SIADH as a result of alter, altered pituitary function, leading to an over-secretion of antidiuretic hormone. Over-secretion of antidiuretic hormone leads to a decrease in urine output, hyponatremia, and hyperosmolality due to overhydration. Chelioplasty. Chelioplasty, instruct the parents to apply a thin layer of antibiotic ointment on the infant's suture line daily for three days and then continue to apply petroleum jelly to the area for several weeks to, several re weeks to promote healing. Manifestations of nightmares include awakening during the night after a scary dream. Nightmares are a sleep disturbance that causes distress after the dream is over. The child might be crying, fearful of returning to sleep, and believe the dream is real. Sleep disturbances cause interruptions in the sleep-wake cycle and can cause impaired concentration, daytime fatigue, and impulsive behaviors. Acute otitis media with a fever. Dressing the toddler in minimal clothing will expose the skin to air and maximize heat evaporation from the skin, thus reducing the toddler's temperature. Potassium chloride. This is why QR, wide QRS complex and peaked T waves. A toddler who has acute diarrhea should consume an oral rehydration solution to replace electrolytes and water by promoting the reabsorption of water and sodium. School age child with celiac disease. <clears throat> Offer white rice to the child because this is gluten free food. The nurse should instruct the parent that the child will remain on a lifelong gluten-free diet and the child should not consume oats, rye, barley, or wheat that is sometimes lactose deficiency and that sometimes lactose can, deficiency can be secondary to this disease. Secondary to this disease. Infant with pneumonia. Nasal flaring indicates the infant is experiencing acute respiratory distress. Tonic clonic seizure, check respiratory rate. Post op cleft palate repair, initiate a referral for a speech therapist for a child who is post operative following a cleft palate repair. A child who has a cleft palate will require speech therapy immediately following the repair to support speech development and future articulation. 10 year old with neutropenia. Provide a school-aged child with a book about adventure as a de developmental activity because children are expanding their knowledge and imagination during this age. Through reading, school-aged children can feel powerful and skillful as they imagine themselves in the stories they read. School-aged child receiving blood transfusion. Lank flank pain is caused by the breakdown of RBCs and is an indication of a hemolytic reaction to the blood transfusion. IV fluid with tetralogy of phthalate and begins to have hypercyanotic spell.
Place the infant in a knee chest position during a hypercyanotic spill to decrease the return of desaturated venous blood from the legs and to, direct, and to direct more blood into the pulmonary artery by increasing systemic vascular resistance. Adolescent with bacterial meningitis. Maintain the adolescent on droplet precautions for at least 24 hours following initiation of antimicrobial therapy. This will ensure that the adolescent is no longer contagious, which protects the family members and the personnel caring for the client. Tunneled central line. Cover the site with a semi-permeable transparent dressing to reduce the risk of infection. Oliguric phase of acute kidney injury. A, de a decreased sodium level indicates hyponatremia and places the child at increased risk for neurological deficits and seizure activity. The nurse should complete a neurological assessment and implement seizure precautions to maintain the child's safety. Parent teaching on the car seat use. Lower anchors and tethers or the latch child safety seat system should be used to secure an infant's car seat in the vehicle. This system provides anchors between the front cushion and the backrest of a car seat. Infant with RSV, initiate droplet precautions for an infant who has RSV because the virus is spread by direct contact with respiratory secretions. Therefore, designated equipment such as blood pressure cuff, stethoscope, should be placed in the infant's room. A three-year-old at a well-child visit need to that, and you need to report to the provider a respiratory rate of 45 a minute is above the expected reference range of 20 to 25 for a three-year-old toddler and can indicate respiratory dysfunction and acute respiratory distress. A child receiving, receiving chemotherapy is at risk for anemia due to the chemotherapy effects on the blood-forming cells of the bone marrow. The development of anemia is diagnosed through laboratory testing of hemoglobin and hematocrit levels. So do HGB test labs. School age child with moderate persistent asthma <clears throat> inform the parent that their child will need pul pulmonary function test every 12 to 24 months to evaluate the presence of lung disease and how the child is responding to the current treatment regimen. As children grow, sometimes their manifestations can improve or decline and treatment needs to change accordingly. Effective treatment of dehydration, a cap refill less than two seconds indicates the current treatment regimen the infant is receiving for dehydration is effective. An episode of forceful vomiting is an indication of increased intracranial pressure in a toddler who has a concussion. Assess this patient first. Abdominal distension is an expected finding of peritonitis. Peritonitis is an inflammation of the lining of the abdominal wall. This inflammation of the abdomen along with the ileus that develops causes abdominal distension. Other manifestation includes chills, irritability, and restlessness. Ventricular septal defect Expect to hear a loud, harsh murmur with a ventricular septal defect due to the left to right shunting of blood, which contributes to hypertrophy of the infant's heart muscle. A priority finding to report to the provider is substernal retractions. This finding indicates the newborn is experiencing increased respiratory effort, which could quickly progress to respiratory failure. Secure the pulse ox sensor to the great toe of the infant and then place the snug fitting sock on the foot to hold the sensor in place. The nurse should also check the skin under the sensor site frequently for temperature, color, and pressure uh, presence of a pulse. Sickle turbidity test. Perform a finger stick on a toddler as a component of the sickle turbidity test. If the test is positive, Hemoglobin electrophoresis is required to distinguish between children who have genetic trait and children who have the disease. Caring for parents that cannot cope with child of terminal illness. Let's talk about some of the ways you have handled previous stressors in your life. Sun protection. 
instruct caregivers to apply a waterproof sunscreen with a minimum SPF of 15 for children. The parents should apply the sunscreen prior to sun exposure to reduce the risk of sunburn. Varicella. The nurse should inform the parent that the child is contagious one day prior to lesion eruption and until the vesicles have crusted over, which usually takes about six days. School-age child with peripheral edema. Palpate the dorsum of feet by pressing the fingertip against a bony prominence for five seconds to assess for peripheral edema. Protective factors against sudden infant death include breastfeeding and the use of pacifier when the infant is sleeping. Toddler with a lower leg cast. Restricted ability of the toddler to move their toes is an indication of neurovascular compromise and requires immediate notification to the provider. Permanent muscle and tissue damage can occur in just a few hours. School-age child with diabetes type 1 diagnosis. The child should administer regular insulin 30 minutes before meals so that the onset coincides with food intake. Child with partial thickness burns on the arm. Wash the affected area with mild soap and water to remove any loose tissue that could cause infection. School age child with meningitis. The presence of a petechial or purpuric rash on a child who is ill can indicate the presence of meningeal oxemia. This type of rash indicates the greatest risk of serious rapid complications from sepsis and should be re reported immediately to the provider. Improving education for students with ADHD. Faculty should plan to teach challenging academic subjects in the morning when students who have ADHD are most able to focus and their medication is most likely to be effective. A child who has cystic fibrosis is unable to properly digest fats due to fibrosis of the pancreas and limited secretion of pancreatic enzymes. The nurse should increase the child's fat intake to 35 to 40 percent of the total caloric intake. When assessing an adolescent for scoliosis, the school nurse should expect to see a unilateral rib hump with hip flexion. This results from the lateral S or C-shaped curvature to the thoracic spine, resulting in asymmetry of the ribs, shoulders, hips, pelvis. Scoliosis can be the result of a neuromuscular or connective tissue disorder, or it can be congenital in nature. Administer an immunization for a four-year-old child using a 22 to 25 gauge needle to minimize the amount of pain the child experiences. Irritability, inability to follow commands, and difficulty concentration, concentrating are manifestations of increased intracranial pressure due to decreased blood flow within the brain and pressure on the brain stem. Kussmaul respirations in a child who has diabetic ketoacidosis. These deep and rasp rapid respirations are the body's attempt to eliminate excess carbon dioxide and to achieve a state of hemostasis. Increased protein concentration in the spinal fluid is a finding that can indicate bacterial bacter meningitis. A pain level of 7 on a scale of 0 to 10 is considered severe. The nurse should administer an analgesic medication for pain relief. Anaphylactic reaction to the cephalozoan, administer epinephrine to treat the anaphylaxis. Tonic-clonic seizure. Place the child in a sideline position to prevent aspiration. Multiple burns in various stages of healing. Suspect child maltreatment in the form of physical abuse if the adolescent has a blunted response to painful stimuli or in injury. Teething can result in discomfort for the infant. Therefore, the guardian should look for indications such as pulling on the ears, difficulty sleeping, increased drooling, or increased fussiness. Adolescents following lumbar puncture, lie supine position for 30 minutes to one hour. Post-op treatment for myelin, myelin menogeseal sac, prone position. 
risk for stress-related reaction to hospitalization, frequent hospitalizations. Acute gastroenteritis, provide oral rehydration solution. Pertussis, initiate droplet precautions. Acute glomerulonephritis, expect manifestations, expected manifestations as periorbital or, orbital, orbital edema. <laughs> Playing peekaboo with an eight-month-old develops object permanence. 18-month-old ear assessment, hold down and back. Infant with colostomy, apply paste to the back of the wafer. Allow the infant to try finger foods like crackers at six months of age. Higher body fat content is associated with earlier onset of menarche. Baclofen adverse effect is muscle weakness. School-age child with leukemia and receiving chemo, inspect mouth daily for sores. Toddler with AIDS, opportunistic infection is candidiasis. Child in stage of despair, they're withdrawn and refuse to talk. Infant with gastroesophageal reflux, thicken feedings with rice cereal. Introduce solid foods to infant at four to six months of age. Acute glomerulonephritis, expect periorbital orbital edema. <laughs> Post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, manifestations to expect hematuria. Toddler with hemophilia, inspect the toys for sharp edges. Tonsillectomy, no straws. When assessing a child, start with the least invasive first to keep them calm. Teterology of phthalate, increased RBCs. Acute glomerulonephritis, continuously monitor for hypertension. Five-month-old, report head lagging to physician. School-age child, allow them to wear glasses during eye exam. Ventricular septal de defect, murmur at left sternal border. Fiberglass arm cast. Place a plastic bag over when showering. Expect an infant with acute renal failure to have hyponatremia. Cystic fibrosis, increased protein intake. Six month old with intussusception, prepare child for barium enema. Bucks traction, check pulses and leg every four hours. Sickle cell anemia experiencing vaso occlusive crisis. Maintain child on bed rest, monitor oxygen saturation. Phenylketonuria, recommend food, recommended food, cooked carrots. Albendazole treats penworms. 15 month old toddler, expect a negative Babinski reflex. Removal of brain stem tumor, monitor temp every 30 minutes. Newborn heel stick, Give oral sucrose two minutes before. Hyperthermia, put child on cooling blanket and cover with a sheet. Oral medication to eight month old. Use oral syringe to place medication alongside tongue. Acute otitis media, massage anterior area of the ear following antibiotic administration. Tracheoesophageal fistula, Perform oropharyngeal suctioning. Digoxin toxicity, vomiting. Passive smoking is a risk factor for otitis media. Six month old with moderate dehydration will present with tachypnea. Stage one Hodgkin's disease, enlarged lymph nodes. Child who stutters, ignore the stuttering. Child with glomerulonephritis, weigh daily. Methylphenidate tablets for ADHD. Weigh child twice weekly. Cochlear implants provide direct stimulation of auditory nerve fiber. Four-year-old child with nephrotic syndrome provide thorough skin care due to edema and risk for infection. The expected reference range of creatinine for a toddler is 0 0.3 to 0 0.7. When teaching school-age parents how to give insulin injection, 
demonstrate the technique on an orange. A one-week-old infant, notify the provider of blue coloring of the sclera. This is indicative of osteogenesis imperfecta. Four-year-old child's cognitive development is development of a conscience or superego. Infant experiencing dehydration, the priority is to measure weight, date, weight, daily weight. <laughs> Impentigo is holy colored, crusty, honey colored, crusty regions around the nose and mouth. Apply topical ointment to lesions, wash child's bed linens daily with hot water, wash hands before contact with affected areas. An adverse effect of oxycodone is nausea, dizziness, sedation, and confusion. A child with nephrotic syndrome will have a high serum cholesterol due to increase in plasma lipids. Eight-month-old infant born at 32 weeks has the development of a six-month-old. Complication of cast is tightness on extremity causing swelling or compartment syndrome. 18-month-old pain assessment, use FLAC pain scale. Methylphenidate, take on an empty stomach. Sleeping 10 hours on a weekend nights is an expected finding in adolescence due to rapid growth. Tympanostomy tubes should stay in place until they fall out on their own. Preschooler is an Erickson stage. This is initiative versus guilt. Standing on one foot for several seconds is expected behavior for a three-year-old. Conjunctivitis. Notify the provider if the sclera becomes inflamed. Pheochromocytoma. Expect hypertension. Boston brace for scoliosis. Wear the brace for 23 hours, removing it to shower or to participate in physical therapy. Sickle cell anemia, maintain hydration to prevent sickling. sickling. Toddler with anterior biases, anterior biases, keep fingernails short to minimize the collection of eggs under the nails. Six month old with pole socks, Cover sensor with clothing to avoid altered or false reading from lights. 24-month-old toddler. Ability to build tower of six blocks and slightly bowed or curved, curved leg appearance. Possible intussusception is an abdominal ultrasound will confirm the pocket in the intestines. Aplastic anemia. Initiate protective environment isolation. Development assessment for a three-year-old. Put your shoes on. Four-year-old gross motor skill is hopping on one foot and fastening buttons on a shirt. Not doing them both simultaneously, though. Two-month-old can start first dose of pneumococcal vaccine with two additional doses at four and 12 months. Slurred speech in a child with sickle cell anemia is an indication of a stroke. Chronic otitis media risks for development delay in speech patterns. Thin, frail extremities is an indication of ch child maltreatment. High-pitched cry is an indication of increased intracranial pressure. Toddler with measles, cocoplic spots. Three-month-old with ileostomy, check the bag for stool every four hours. Six-year-old with presence of sparse, fine pubic hair is an indication of precocious puberty and requires further evaluation.